In this lecture, we discussed the Big A architecture, also called the ISA, instruction set architecture, and the small A architecture. That is the actual implementation of the ISA, which is also known as the microarchitecture. Uh, we will understand the concept of machine language and some historical aspects of Intel processor evolution. In the last lecture, we discussed the importance of assembly language and we briefly touched upon the different uh, components of a processor's working and how does it interact with each other. As the assembly language uh, heavily is dependent on registers, we also talked about the structure of general purpose registers along with their functionality. We also discussed some uh, useful terminologies uh, related to assembly language, such as mnemonics, instruction encoding, and classification of instructions into various groups. Mnemonics are translated by the assembler into machine codes, un understandable by the processors. The question now is, what are the impacts of this translation procedure on uh, performance? So this is uh, one view of the level of transformation between the human and machine. The C code written in a high level language is compiled by a system code such as the compiler, uh, which is based on a certain grammar. It translates the code into a list of ordered mnemonics, a human readable form of instructions. These mnemonics are ultimately translated by an assembler into a stream of binary numbers, which is the only language understood by uh, the processor. Uh, and then the runtime, which actually executes the program also impacts the program. So the question, does the translation impacts performance? Let's just uh, uh, revise what we said. What makes a program run fast depends on the program as written in C, for instance, how you write the code, then what does the compiler do to this code? How does it translate the C code into the ISA, the instructions chosen by uh, the compiler and then the assembler converts that into a zeros and ones to machine code and then how is your hardware going to execute your code how much time it takes to execute instructions different instructions these are the factors that will impact your program for now let's concentrate on the instruction set architecture that is uh, selected for a particular processor and is made available to the compiler so what does the isa defines it defines three things. The system state that includes registers that are a basic unit of small storage inside the CPU, the program counter that tells what instruction needs to be executed at that instance of time. And it also includes all the memory contents. So all of these are part of the system state. The ISA also includes the instructions that the CPU can execute all the basic instructions such as add, subtract, mult, etc. And finally, the ISA also defines what will happen to the system state after the instruction executes. So if you remember, we talked about the program status work, PSW. So the effect that each of these instructions will have on the system state is also what is defined in the ISA. The general ISA design decisions include what instructions are available like add, subtract, multiply, shift operations, etc., and how they change the state of the system. And also how they are encoded, because uh, if you recall, the compiler changes the code into a stream of ones and zeros. That is uh, what the computer understands, right? So encoding is exactly the mapping of high level constructs into a bit tree sequence that in encodes that in, uh, instructions. Another big decision that the ISA has to make is how many explicit registers your computer has and how wide they actually are. If you recall, we talked at length about the width of registers and most of the Intel x86 ISA includes registers that are 8-bit, uh, 16-bit, 32-bit, 64-bit addressable. Very versatile uh, use. And finally, the ISA defines something very important, which is how do you specify a location in memory? So uh, how do you specify an address of a memory location in your instruction? How do you manipulate addresses inside a memory? It is widely called the supported addressing modes. We will talk on this uh, very important aspect of a uh, processor later when we get a little bit into the assembly programming. Uh, so, 8086 is one of the most 
popular ISA and processors, uh, Intel and AMD are some examples that implement the x86 processors. The x86 ISA dominate the uh, server desktop and laptop markets. They actually have a very evolutionary design due to the registers naming conventions that makes it backward compatible up until 8086 introduced in 1978. Because if you have a code that is compiled for an 8-bit machine, it, that is probably addressed using the 8-bit portion of the wider registers used for 32-bit and 64-bit machines. Because the 8-bit uh, AH and AL register is what forms the larger 16-bits register AX, which in turn is part of the extended 32-bit register named as EAX. So this is one of the secrets behind this evolutionary design that makes it backward compatible to its ancestors. As time passed, more and more features were added. And also, uh, the x 6 is a type of ISA that is uh, called CISC, uh, which stands for a Complex Instruction Set Computer. Uh, we talked about uh, that uh, earlier. Contrary to its counterpart, known as RISC, uh, Reduced Instruction Set Architecture, the CISC-based processors has a broad spectrum of different instructions with many formats, as we have seen. The format of the instruction is complex, and they can execute many operations as a part of a single instruction. For, for example, they can manipulate very large strings of data in memory. So the x86 has a very rich set of instructions. Unlike the RISC uh, processors, which uses simple instructions such as add, sub, mult, etc. Both the CISC and RISC has a lot of implications of how the hardware is designed, but uh, that is out of the scope of, uh, of computer organization and assembly and could be learned in more advanced courses of computer architecture. So this is an amazing evolution of uh, x86 architecture. Its inception in 1978 with 29K transistors uh, with, uh, and 5 to 10 megahertz clock frequency. This was the first 16-bit processor and became the basis of IBM PC uh, with, I, with one megabit of address space. A very small amount of memory that uh, can even not hold an image of high definition, right? Uh, nowadays, 8 GB of uh, space is just normal. Then came the 386, almost eight years later, uh, that had 275K transistors and frequency speed up to 33 megahertz. This was the first 32-bit uh, processor, which was referred to as the IA32. It had a flat addressing memory, a flat model of uh, memory. It did not have to segment the memory and address them individually. You had a single address, and that could point anywhere in the memory. And that made the management and accessing the memory much, much simpler. This system was capable of running Unix, very similar to what we call Linux. 32-bit uh, uh, Linux-based GCC targets the 386 by default. So if you remember, we talked about uh, two versions, two syntaxes of assembly language, the Intel-based uh, assembly syntax and the A, E, and T. Uh, based uh, syntax. The at and based syntax was basically introduced to uh, make it compatible with its uh, GCC uh, compilers that by default targets the uh, 386 processors. 20 years later, the transistor count increased by 10,000 fold and a huge increase in frequency as well, 2.8 gigahertz to 3.8 gigahertz. This was the first 64-bit Intel processor referred to as x86-64. Uh, there was also an evolution uh, between the 386 and the TM4 processors. So uh, 486 was introduced in 1989, which became the foundation of Pentium processor until Pentium 4. As the numbers of transistors increased manifold, uh, Every 18 years, according to Moore's law, it had a toll on, uh, on power consumption. As more and more transistors were stuffed 
inside one core. So in a paradigm shift, the Intel introduced a core to due processor, a dual core processor that contained multiple computing cores. This paved the path towards multi-core systems. And in 2008, the Core i7 processors came in the market. That was based on four cores. This was an important milestone as this paradigm shift reduced the complexity of hardware design and the burden was shifted onto software development. Um, other features that were introduced during all this evolution are new instructions to support uh, multimedia operations and more efficient uh, conditional codes and many more, uh, and many more codes. So in this discussion on x86 ISA, one should not forget about the advanced micro devices, AMD contributions that implemented a clone of the same ISA with a different implementation. So there can be a different implementation for the same ISA. And that is the reason why, why AMD has followed just behind um, Intel. So uh, for the same x86 ISA, there are, um, Intel has one implementation and advanced micro devices has its own implementation. Uh, it is, um, AMD has followed just behind Intel. It is a little bit slower, but a lot cheaper. But then AMD recruited some uh, of the best available circuit designers from many uh, prominent companies and built Opteron, considered as a tough competitor to Pentium 4. And in fact, AMD were the first to develop their own extension of x86 to 64 bits called x86 64. So Intel was compelled to renew their efforts to develop their own version of 64 bit uh, processors after completely failing in their first attempt in 2001. And finally, uh, in 2004, Intel announced uh, EM64T, an extension to IA32. Uh, almost nowadays, almost all high end processors support x86, 64. However, lots of code is still for uh, IA32. So uh, we have been using architecture and microarchitecture in our discussion. Let's formally define what do they mean. We have uh, the Architecture with a big A, also called uh, the instruction set architecture, ISA. The parts uh, of a processor design that one needs to understand to write assembly code, right? So understanding the ISA is absolutely necessary for understanding assembly language. Or in simple words, ISA is what uh, is directly visible to the software. And the microarchitecture, also known as uh, uh, known for its small a, that is basically the details about how the ISA architecture is actually implemented. The actual encoding of all the instructions defined in an ISA. So now, uh, is cache size architecture or microarchitecture? So to answer such question, you need to ask whether the user can interact with it or not. In other words, whether the user can see it or not. It is used by the software, but it is not directly visible to the software. So this is not part of the architecture. Um, how about the uh, core frequency? The core frequency is something, is not something that uh, software really uh, knows and really care about. The user does care about it because the processor would run really fast. But when writing assembly code, the user usually don't care about uh, this frequency. So uh, core frequency is part of microarchitecture. And what about numbers of registers? So the number of registers is something that the user need to know when writing an assembly code. The user could be a compiler uh, designer or assembly programmer. Uh, they really need to know about uh, number of registers. Therefore, uh, this is part of 
and now you see. Let us talk about uh, the assembly programmer's view of the system. So uh, here we have the processor. So there are uh, three important things that the assembly programmer needs to know. The, uh, the program counter, PC, that holds the address of the instruction that uh, will be executed next. And as the processor executes one instruction after the other, so PC keeps track of this uh, program. It also it is also called EIP in a 32-bit architecture and RIP in a 64-bit architecture. The second thing that the assembly programmer needs to know is the register file. That is a very fast memory placed inside the processor and is used intensively by the processor. And finally, the programmer also needs to uh, understand the condition codes. Uh, remember, we talked about the program status work. Condition codes store information about the recent most arithmetic operation. So when you want to compare whether one value is greater or less than the other, this is set in the condition code. This uh, binary sequence tell programmers a lot of useful information that we uh, saw earlier. Then the uh, assembly programmers also need to know about memory and how it is organized. Memory is byte addressable array organized into different word length and data types. So there is a place inside the memory that is used for the program instructions, known as the object code. So the processor uses the PC to obtain instructions from this region of the memory. The address is contained in the PC register that is controlled only by the processor. Then the processor can also request for data operands as required by the instruction. So the program data region is accessed to fetch the data. The stacked region of memory is a special region that is important for implementing procedural calls. And uh, we will come back to uh, that at a later session.